This is KGW News at 5. Today, we'll learn if OHSU nurses have voted to authorize a strike. We'll break down what it all means. Plus. Bring my boys back. I don't want anything more than to love them. I want them back with me safe. That father is pleading with the mother of his two children. Vancouver police believe she took them from their school without the father's consent, and he hasn't seen them since. We'll hear more from him coming up in one of our top local stories. And a chance to live out their NBA dream. We'll take you <laughs> inside the tryouts for the Blazers G League team, the Rip City Remix. The fact that all of us are here this morning suggests none of us made the squad. Uh, so we <laughs> press on with new weather and traffic on this Monday morning. Not just any Monday, by the way. Today is also National Cheeseburger today. Oh, today. that's yes. right. Doesn't that just make Monday feel better? <laughs> yes. yes. Does that work for you, Rod? Can you I'd deal with that? More excited if it were National Bacon Cheeseburger Day. Okay. Ooh, you can probably add yeah, to I it. Think you, can. <laughs> <laughs> you can add whatever you want to that burger, baby. Let's get you going with the weather. I feel like I have a uh, temperature dropping alert. Last Friday, 95. Saturday, 85. Yesterday, 75. And today, maybe even a little bit cooler. We have clouds passing this morning. You can see in green, radar has picked up some inland showers. So, I mean, mainly we're going to be dry. But don't be surprised if you're in a spot where you get a little spritz of a raindrop this morning. You can see the clouds from the top of the Wells Fargo building. We're at 61 degrees. Winds here in the valley are, are light and calm, generally speaking. Uh, the cloudiness that we have right now will be passing to the east. We'll see thinning cloud cover becoming partly to maybe even mostly sunny, but staying really comfortable. Mid 60s at noon. There's today's high 74 degrees. Chris McGinnis checking the roads. Wow. Start the week, right? Okay, let's get you live to the roads in North Portland. This is I-5 up near Victory Boulevard. Your southbound commute right there. That'll get busier in the next hour, but right now it's pretty wide open. Lots of elbow room on the sunset. A few cars uh, making their way out towards Cornelius Pass Road. Got a tandem semi there that's stuck on the shoulder. Hopefully we get that moving soon, but so far the traffic is moving. No crashes, no unexpected delays, guys. Okay, thank you, Chris. Later this morning, the union representing nearly 3,200 nurses at OHSU will announce the results of a strike authorization vote. So if they voted yes, this does not mean that they're going to go on strike. It just means the union could call a strike at any time. We want to bring in Devin Haskins. He has a breakdown of how we got here. He's live at Carruthers Park along the South Waterfront. Good morning, Devin. Yeah, good morning. It's here at Carruthers Park where they'll make that announcement. It's just conveniently located. Also next to OHSU property, nurses and OHSU have been in contract negotiations since December of last year. And in August, the nurses union declared an impasse, which basically sent the two sides into a stalemate and then a 30 day cooling off period. OHSU nurses say that they want a contract that sets safe, safe staffing ratios one that also provides incentives that will keep nurses and recruit highly skilled ones. Also one, a contract that improves workplace safety. OHSU, on the other hand, in their latest bargaining update on their website from Thursday says they've offered wage increases from across the board of 23.5% over three years. They said they also address minimum staffing levels in the emergency departments and other areas and also offered nurses a, bo a bonus for full-time and part-time nurses. Now, the last nurses strike here at OHSU was in 2001. That one lasted 56 days. And again, if nurses vote to authorize a strike, that does not mean that they will go on strike. It just means that they could. And if they do call a strike, they would then by federal law have to give OHSU a 10 day notice before going on strike. Live in South Waterfront, I'm Devin Haskins. Back to you. Thanks for that report, Devin. Meanwhile, Kaiser Permanente and the union representing the nurses who work there will go back to bargaining this week. There are meetings scheduled for this Thursday and Friday. The nurses' current contract expires September 30th. The union is asking for better working conditions and a minimum wage of $25 an hour to meet the rising cost of living. Kaiser has offered $21 per hour and says it's committed to hiring more staff. Kaiser Permanente employs about 4,000 workers in Oregon and Southwest Washington. The state trial for Measure 114 begins today in Harney County. 114 is the voter approved gun measure that, among other things, requires a permit process to buy a gun and bans magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Some have called it one of the strictest gun laws in the country. 
But even though voters approved it, it's been on hold since last year as opponents continue to challenge its legality in both state and federal court. Back in July, a federal judge ruled that Measure 114 is constitutional under U.S. law. The state trial will decide if it violates Oregon's constitution. The trial is set to start at 9 o'clock this morning. Today, a Vancouver father is dealing with a nightmare. He has full custody of his two sons, but police say his ex-wife kidnapped the boys on Friday. This is seven-year-old Dexter and 15-year-old Braxton. Their mom, Angelina Hinson, has a protective order against her, preventing her from seeing her sons. Police say her partner, Joel Long, helped her abduct them. Now their dad, Ryan Hinson, is desperate to get them back. My new wife has sacrificed everything to help me love those two. And uh, I just could, I can't fathom how she would want to keep them from their father. Here's how you can help. You should be on the lookout for a Chevy Sonic with the license plate BXZ0985. They may also be traveling in a dark gray Hyundai Elantra. Dexter is four foot six with green eyes and brown hair. Braxton is five four with brown eyes and brown hair. You're asked to call 911 if you have any information. Investigators think a fire at a fiberglass plant over the weekend in Happy Valley was set intentionally. It started early Saturday morning at Miles Fiberglass on Audi Road near the I-205 overpass. Officials told people living in the area to stay inside due to asbestos concerns. It also forced evacuations at two nearby apartment buildings, which were lifted yesterday. Test results for asbestos in those apartments are expected to come in later this week, though officials think the risk is low. People affected can get help finding a short-term place to stay, but in the meantime, crews are working to clean up the debris in the area. One of Portland's best-known cider makers is closing up shop. After 12 years in business, Reverend Nats says its last day will be this coming Sunday, September the 24th. The news comes about six months after Reverend Nats just opened an expanded tap room off Division Street. Nat talked about things like the pandemic and slumping sales for the reasons behind the closure. Before they go, they'll celebrate all things cider. They're having a big party on Saturday the 23rd, so that's this Saturday. And that party will feature their final three new releases, including one called Swan Song and a couple of non-alcoholic concoctions. Home delivery, by the way, will be available through the end of September. Meanwhile, Pied Cow Coffee in Southeast Portland is already closed. Yesterday was its last day on Belmont Street and it held an everything must go sale. The owners say Pied Cow never fully bounced back after the pandemic. The cafe was in a historic 140 year old building, which is currently for sale for one and a half million dollars. Yeah, definitely just a reminder to go out if you can and help our local businesses. Okay, this morning, what are we looking at weather-wise? Well, we're trying to figure this out. Oh, really? <laughs> I think Still I know what's progress? going on. Dude. <laughs> you started the morning with the jacket on already. We're only eight minutes into well, the hour. It's off. We're working hard. <laughs> Here's a look at the satellite picture. It shows a passing band of clouds, a band of clouds that will get out of here, bring us increasing sunshine as we get rolling into the uh, afternoon hours. And you can see some little showers here and there. I haven't seen anything in Multnomah County or down in the Salem area, but don't be surprised if all of a sudden you feel a little spritz. And remember, the sun comes up before seven this morning and sometimes right around sunrise you get a little lift in the atmosphere and it can produce a little spritz of rain so you could find a raindrop out there there's some showers up around Seattle as well future cast nine o'clock this morning now you can see the clearing coming in from Astoria we're getting on the back side of the clouds we will go on to be partly to perhaps even mostly sunny this afternoon but there will be more waves of cloudiness coming and going the next couple of days here's tomorrow morning and I'm gonna go ahead and play this into Wednesday morning because Wednesday morning is the best chance to see more numerous showers in our area. All of this will just keep our temperatures on the very comfortable side, as I mentioned earlier in the show. I do want to point out, haven't had a lot of red flag high fire danger warnings lately, but we have one today. This is in effect for today into tomorrow from the uh, White Salmon, uh, Washington side of the gorge into the Dalles and Wasco County and up through the Columbia Basin. West winds this afternoon, 25 to 40 miles per hour. Wouldn't take much for a spark to get out of control, so use caution with that. Here are the temperatures this morning. They're pretty nice. Clouds keeping Portland at 61. 
Salem just a couple degrees shy of that 59, 54 in Newport, cooler there and Benz of 55, 40s out in Baker City and Burns this morning. Uh, another warning to tell you about is this one. And remember, sneaker waves can be particularly dangerous. We have a sneaker wave warning up for today into tomorrow at the coast. Northwest winds 10 to 15, gusts to 25. Use caution. Don't turn your, never do this. The ocean's here. Never turn your back to the ocean, especially when we have a sneaker wave warning up. Otherwise, this will be a morning shower chance in clouds and then increasing sunshine coming for you folks at the beach this afternoon as well. It's a light wind with becoming partly cloudy skies in mid 70s in the Willamette Valley. Salem and Portland each at 74. Shower chance tomorrow, but mainly dry. Better shower chance Wednesday. Do you see any hot weather? Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any either. We'll be back. Our show continuing after this.